Welcome back to a new video here in Swap. In this video, we are going to make this timer and also check the link in the description to download the files for this video. The first thing we need to do is we're going to create a new fusion composition and then we're going to name this time or timer. It's up to you. Would you name this? Now, once you're in fusion, bring a background node and connect this to the media out and then we're going to make this transparent. Consume a little bit. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a second background, which is going to act as the base for our timer. After that, we're going to add an ellipse and we're going to resize this so that it's going to be the base. With this background selected, we're going to click background again and create a new background. And that is going to act as the inside elements of our timer. We're going to change the color for these and you can make these whichever color you want. We can do yellow in this tutorial and we're going to add another ellipse here and we're going to make these smaller. After you're happy with the size of that, we are going to take this solid out and we're going to increase the border width. Now that you have the border width, we're going to bring this down until we don't see the black dot in the middle. This is an optional step. If you like that being in the middle, you can leave it like that. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually animate the length. But if we bring this down a little bit, you will see that it looks a little bit weird like that. So we're going to go and change the cap style to flat. That way we can animate these and it will not look that weird. Now we want the position to be right there at the top. So we're going to actually change the position to 0.25. That way it's going to start up there. Now we can increase the length and we're going to right click the length and we're going to go to modify with anim curves. Now this is going to make the circle show up, but we want the opposite to happen. So we're going to go to the modifier section here and then where it says invert, we're going to click that. That way it's going to start with the timer full and then it's going to go all the way until the last keyframe and it will just disappear. For the edges one, we're going to add a polygon. We're going to right click and then we're going to go to polygon and then create an ellipse. We can press click here and then we can press control G so we can see the guides. We're going to select these points and we're going to align our circle so that each of the points are on top of the line and we're going to bring this down like that too. After we have that, we're going to take the solid out and we're going to increase the border width. Again, we're going to position these to be at the top. So in this case, it's going to be 0.75 and we're going to change the border style to flat. Now, if we follow the same process as the other one, if we right click and modify with anim curves and then invert these, you will see that it looks good too and if you like it you can leave it like this now in the example we had this line going the opposite way so we're gonna change the white rotation to 180 degrees and then we're gonna go to the modifiers and make sure that this is not inverted now they're gonna be following the same path and one is gonna show up while the other one is disappearing so at the end they both one completes the round and the other one ends. Since this is dynamic, when you put this into a fusion composition, you will just make it longer and it will just last longer and you won't have to adapt and change things anymore. Now for the next part, we're gonna add the numbers. So we're gonna bring this text down here and we're gonna connect this here. And here you can put whatever number you want for now, but we're gonna use an expression. And here you can adjust the style in whichever way you want. Now, in this case, we're going to right click and we're going to add an expression. I cannot remember the expression just like that. So we're going to go back into the example that I first built because I had to spend a bunch of hours trying to figure this out. So we're going to go to the text and we're going to just copy that expression that we have here. As you see, it looks a little bit complicated, right? So we're going to go to the time again that we're building and we are going to paste it here. You can find this expression in the description so you can copy and paste this into your project. But don't leave yet because we still have to do one more thing. As you can see now, the timer is just going down. If we want this to be a countdown and a timer that goes up so that you can use it for two different purposes, we're going to have to do these. So we're going to go to the text and we're going to go to edit controls. And here we're going to create a new control and we're going to name these timer slash countdown. Then we're going to go here to the input control and we're going to find a checkbox control. After that, make sure that you are here where it says user. You can leave this in text or just leave it at user. It's up to you since we're not really going to use that. After we have created that control, the new control is going to show up here. And now we're going to have to edit our expression a little bit. 
In order to know what to put in our expression, you would just right click here and check expression, press plus, and then this is what we need to put in that expression. So we're just gonna copy and paste that and then remove that expression. And now we're gonna replace mode for the name of the control that we created, timer countdown, like that. So now if we go to the timer countdown, it's gonna go up from zero. If it's unselected, and if you click, it's gonna go from five to zero because five is the length of our fusion composition. If you make it longer, it's gonna start at a higher number. And if you make it shorter, it's gonna start at a lower number. Now, the last thing that you can do here is just styling wise, you can add different colors or drop shadows. What I did was I press control and spacebar and add a drop shadow. Here you can adjust the different settings and the blur and the strength, just make it really subtle. Now we're gonna select the drop shadow. We're gonna press Ctrl C to copy. And then with these selected here, the text, we press Ctrl Shift V to create an instance. That means that whatever edit you make in any of these, these will affect all the other ones. And the last drop shadow we're gonna add to this background here. And then the last thing that you have to do is simply add these on top of any type of video that you have and then you can just adjust the position of these so yeah this is a great thing to have in your assets library for when you're editing so if you make speed run videos or if you make exercises videos where a timer is required or is helpful then you can make sure to have these and that will make your life easier because you will save a ton of time and not have to create a new one every time. This is it for this video. I hope that you enjoy it and that you find it helpful and I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.